Hello, my name is Justin Locklear and this is Conversations in the Void. Tonight we're talking with an artist who graduated from the Rhode Island School of Design with honors. We got her master's in fine arts, also studied at the School of Fine Arts in Boston, as well as Pepperdine University. She's shown uh, recently at the uh, Goss Michael Foundation and the Dallas Contemporary, and has shown internationally in Copenhagen, Paris, and Malmö, Sweden. <laughs> Michelle Rawlings, how are you tonight? Good, how are you? Thank you for being with us tonight. <laughs> I want to dive in and talk about your work, and um, your work is often in a response to, or it seems this way, a, a response to or a reflection of mm -hmm. past experiences, nostalgia, and uh, stations in life, uh, it seems to me, yeah. from an outsider. Where do you see yourself um, in terms of what you're making, along that, that linear narrative of your life? Where do you see yourself right now? I think like, it's a really interesting question because I think artists always deal with this idea of like, where does their work start? Like, because you know, you make your art in childhood, obviously. But I think that's something that is significant in my work, like a theme that sort of tends to always repeat is this sort of like personal self-awareness of myself as some sort of like the creator or the idea of the artist creator and my work within the broader realm of the linear like chronology or narrative. So um, I think when I'm changing my work and my works, I don't quite know where it's going. I can take comfort in the fact that like, well, it's just part of this bigger thing, you <laughs> right. know? Um, but yeah, I think that there's overlaps and there's almost like a compression of time. There's this idea of um, myself as being self-aware and in this time but also aware of myself in the past and aware of myself looking back on this work like in the future or something and describe maybe, that well i feel like i use portraiture a lot i use self-portraiture a lot or i, I kind of use portrait, other people's portraits interchangeably with mine but every image i use even if it's just a painting it sort of has a marker in time like it looks like a kind of art that was made um, at a specific time where it looks like the type of photograph that was made at a specific time or whatever. But then there's, there's at the same time, there's this angst about the future too. And I think that it's obvious to the viewer that I'm trying to like push the envelope and discover something new in my work. So there's an angst about the future as well. Um, so right now at this point in time, I feel like if, theme that's coming through in my work is that like I'm working a lot more abstractly my work isn't as like content heavy maybe as it used to be mm -hmm. I feel like it's I'm working a little bit more in series and a little bit more where I'm like opening up to like explore a certain like um image or idea like again and again versus having each piece I make be sort of this like singular example within the archive is that part of the change that you were noting earlier, that you, you feel yeah. like your work is in a moment of change? Yeah. I feel like I'm luckily and happily starting to like show more. Mm -hmm. And so my schedule is getting more demanding, and I can't take as long with each image as I'd, like, as I'd like to and be able to put on the show I'd like to. So I have to, there has to be some give because I'm, I've been really stressing myself out, like trying to get like to work in the way I used to. So now like for the show that's coming up, I'm like letting myself just do like a smaller series of drawings that are a little bit more repetitive, or at least formatted in a specific way. So. Some artists find themselves in a point in their career where they will hire or they will utilize assistance. Yeah. What, where do you see yourself in terms of that? Do you think that because of the, the content and the type of art making that you do, mm -hmm. do you think you could have other people making it with you? Or what, what does that look like for you? I once read an interview with Cindy Sherman, how mm. she was saying she could never hire an assistant because she would feel like she had to like entertain them. Right. And I'm very much that way. That's my personality is I just feel like I, I get real anxious having someone like waiting for something to do or and I don't really know what I'm doing I work very intuitively as most artists do but um I'm not against it I totally think it's like a normal thing and a great thing for artists to have assistance that's been happening since like the uh proto renaissance or whatever right, yeah. you know? so, um but I think um for me my work does I think situation situate itself in this tradition of sort of more of like the artist as 
sub subjective type of hero point of view, <laughs> like where the yeah. artist is like alone and working, and there's like an idiosyncratic like part of their work that it's like they made it or something. Right. And I happen to be interested in that for me, for that my kind practice. of indelible identity that's in. Yeah, and I don't think it's necessarily recognizable. It's not like I want like a hand. A, a brushstroke that I recognize, mm -hmm. but it's just that I'm very particular about things, and I can't really imagine telling someone what to do or explaining how to do it or something. I don't really know what it is. I'm no, I, I understand. Gonna, I actually yeah. want to. I want to kind of uh, take that idea and apply it to a series of your paintings, the monochromes. Mm -hmm. So uh, what you've described is a very sort of intuitive, uh, innate art making that you do. Mm -hmm. How did you find yourself making the monochromes? So, it, yeah, I'm glad you asked because um, it, that was another thing where I felt like my work had to give in some way because before that it was just like all these portraits and they were really difficult to install and um, I needed some breathing room in the work because it was just so um, content heavy and sort of like demanding and difficult, like I said, to like... Um, I don't know, it just made a lot of demands around it, whatever. But mm -hmm. And I work in these journals all the time where I'm, like, working with spacing and collaging and pages. And I love how, like, sometimes in journals you'll have these pages that are totally just blank or that maybe you color in mm -hmm. just one color. You have this, like, other splotch of color. And those, like, kind of pauses in the sentences where there's just color, um, where there's just, like, a breath. Or it doesn't even make sense. It just is there, and it's a nice color, or something like right. I. So they're almost like periods at the end of sentences. I see them that way. Yeah, so it allows you to visually sort of punctuate and move the person mm -hmm. through the the show without having them to reinvest every single time in the right. same way. Sort of like it's just part of the bigger sequence or something. That's great. Yeah, and uh, and uh, and so how how does your work? I mean, obviously, every artist is different, but how does your work as a painter differentiate from other painters? I think that something I've been interested in um, throughout my career is this idea that my work, um, rather than presenting a series of work to the viewer where they're all kind of formatted in some way, where they're maybe they're the same size, or they're kind of made in a similar way and they reach a similar end, even though obviously they're gonna be all different within the series, um, is something that I've never done or I've never been that interested in doing. Mm -hmm. I've always been interested in creating this sequence of images that take their point of origin at, like from wildly different places so that there's no real comparison to be made between the pictures. It's not like you could walk through the show and be like, I like this one the best, you know? Because they're not, it, it's they're not like different brands of the same product or different like flavors of the mm -hmm. same brand. Right. They, they're like, just they don't. They're just totally different things. They stand out on their yeah. own. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, you talk a lot in in, in interviews and, and as well as tonight um, about the the effect on um, the. Uh, the, uh, on, on the viewer. Mm -hmm. Briefly, wh wh where do you see yourself as a painter in terms of the viewer response? Like, do you care about it? Do you, do you yeah. seek it out? I don't like seek out approval, but right. I really, really, really want to surprise people all the time and like make them give them something, that's <laughs> give them something but like um, do something that they're excited and surprised by it. And they sort of have to like reorient themselves to and maybe they've never, they don't expect me to make it or they've never, I mean, I think every artist is like trying to make something that like they haven't really seen before and that's right. where they're happy and where they feel comfortable. So, I mean, along, it's, it's a similar goal for me, but I do feel like my audience is very personal to me. Mm -hmm. I like for them to sort of maybe know who I am and know my work in the past and be aware again of the sort of chronology of my work. So moving that into your upcoming show, yeah. Where do you see yourself, or can you give us a sort of a glimpse into what that will be for mm -hmm. the audience? I'm excited because what happened was I was making a PDF of some paintings of mine, and my old laptop kept glitching uh -huh. um, because these images were too big. But um, it was 
glitching in ways where it was just recombinations of actually all my paintings, of all my images. And the glitches were actually like really like sublimely sort of beautiful, like things that I had never seen before. And just incredible sort of paintings and images in their own right. Um, so I just wanted to use those as a basis for the work I'm making. Fantastic. The, yeah. So that's what we have to look forward to in, yeah. in Houston, yeah. correct? And what's the, and what's the uh, where you'll be showing? Uh, it's called Hello Project Gallery. And when will it be opening? March twentieth. March twentieth. Yeah. Hello Project Gallery, yeah. Houston, Texas. Yeah. We're getting to see the upcoming work from Michelle Rawlings. <laughs> uh, this has been Conversations in the Void. I've been Justin Locklear. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> this is great.